Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video on Leo421. And today, I'm going to review Debian 11 codenamed Bullseye that was released one year ago today, August 14th, 2021, and now it is August 14th, 2022, if we look here. Yes, it is. So I'm going to be reviewing this video talking about LTS, and what I don't like about Debian 11, and what I do like. You'll find all that out in this video. Debian 11 was released on August 14th, 2021, and this release included many major changes described in the press, press release conference and the notes. But we really, to obtain and install Debian, we have to see the installation information page and the installation guide, or to upgrade from an older Debian release, we can see instructions from there. But the latest version of Debian, Debian 11.4, was released on July 9th, 2022. And here below, you'll see all the architectures that are supported. So that's like about Bullseye that was released last year <laughs> today. The Debian long-term support LTS for Debian 9 Stretch ended on June 30th, 2022, making it out of support for security updates and all that stuff. You'll see here, right here, where it's red, these are the previous LTS releases that are no longer available, uh, that don't have security updates anymore. Debian 9 Stretch ended just on June 30th, 2022, making the fourth one on this list to be ended now. Squeezy Wheezy Jesse. Jesse was my favorite stretch. Uh, I thought was okay, but I really enjoyed Jesse. Uh, Debian 10 Buster is a great release as well. Uh, I definitely highly try it out, rather than Bullseye, which is still to be defined roughly July 2024 to June 2026. So, yeah, that's just the uh, LTS support section. The brand new Debian website allows us to see a community page and download the operating system by one click of a button. Instead, if you go back to 2019 when Debian was Debian 10 had just been released, the Debian website was much, much different, allowing us with a whole bunch of different operating options to choose from the about section getting debian the news support and all the other stuff this is what the website used to look like rather than now when it is a whole different option so i do like this but i definitely prefer that you have this huge download button here uh for the latest version of debian which downloads the net install method so now I'm going to go into this right here. This is the Getting Debian section. You can either choose from the small CDs or the larger complete installation CDs, or you could try a Debian cloud image by a set of CV CDs or DVDs from the one of the vendors selling Debian CDs. But why not just use the net install or Debian Live before installing? I can't remember the really the last time that I used a CD to install Debian. Never did I. I only did Windows 7. Flash drive is just so much easier to use, which I have. And Debian Live is awesome because if you click on it, I'm going to open a new tab. Debian Live allows you to test the distribution before you actually install it. And the installer, starting from Debian 10, which was the last release of Debian, the live images contain the end-user-friendly Calamari's installer, a distribution-independent installer framework as alternative to our well-known Debian installer. This is the Calamari's installer that I use to install Debian 11 and Debian 10. It's really not much of a difference, but there is, from the regular Debian installer, this is what it would mainly look like, uh, the way that they don't really have a picture of it, but it was a lot more advanced than this Calamari's installer, which is so much easier. But I do like both ways. But the Calamari's installer is so much easier to use. So now I'm going to go over back here, and I'm going to talk about non-free software. 
unofficial live CD DVD images with non-free firmware included. If any of the hardware in your system requires non-free firmware to be loaded with the device driver, you can use one of the tarballs of common firmware packages or download an unofficial image including these non-free firmwares. So I'm going to click on that. And here I'm going to go to AMD64 ISO Hybrid. And here we have the latest version of Debian. But look at this, we have multiple desktop environments. Cinnamon, GNOME, KDE Plasma, LXDE, LXQT, Mate, Standard, and the XFCE uh, desktop environment. So here you would choose one of the ISO CDs and download it, and that brings you the Calamari's installer, and that's how you'd install from there by clicking on the very first option. So anyways, back to that non-free software. Non-free, I find that Debian almost never works unless you are using the non-free software. I just noticed this, it's August 14th and it's 8.14 p.m. How convenient. All right, so we're gonna go back to the non-free. I have Wi-Fi right here, as you can see. An ethernet icon would look a little bit different, but I think it's just way more easier to have Wi-Fi than that silly ethernet cable anyway. So Flatpak is a great way to install apps that are not on the actual software store here. If you get set up, choose your distribution and follow the instructions on command line terminal by putting sudo and then inserting this and follow the instructions. If you really need help setting it up, uh, click on the video in the top right corner right now and you'll see the tutorial video on how to install it. So that's Flatpak, it's great, great way to install uh, apps that are not really supported but it's really called Flat Hub where you install the apps. I don't know why they call that, but here's some of the main popular apps that can be installed as well. So installing an app is very easy. You just click the activities menu and go into the software app and go ahead and install some apps. So let's say I go to uh, a fun game that I love to play, not Extreme Tux Racer, but Chromium BSU. which is a great game of, of a space shooter. It's a fast-paced, arcade-style, top-scrolling space shooter, and it's awesome, uh, but this is just showing how to install apps, and this would be the Flatpak, uh, the source of Flatpak, which gives you the latest version of this, which is awesome. So what I do like about installing apps, you have the option to go by Debian or the Flathub source which is awesome. So here we go, I'm gonna launch it. But this is basically how to install a game. It's fun, you might not be able to hear it, uh, but it's a great game to play. Uh, I highly recommend it if you are a fan of space shooters and a bunch of that stuff, but that's just how to install games. Uh, it's fun, very fun. So, aside from that, I love the GNOME software, but another thing I don't like about the GNOME software is that the apps do not sort. Look, although I'm so used to the app sorting as ABC order, and look, it always just goes to the bottom of the list, so I have to manually sort these apps here. So I would say uh, Chromium would be right here. So that's where it would go when I would install it. But it's just a lot more harder. But I do like that Debian 11 comes with, if I go into the settings menu, the about section, uh, we have our device information. I'll just stay like this. We have our device name, memory, processor, graphics, disk capacity, our OS name, OS type, GNOME version, which is 3.38.5. Uh, I am not a fan of GNOME 40. Uh, I like X11 with GNOME version before 3.38. But I'm 
the next Debian version will definitely not have GNOME 3.38 or lower. It will have GNOME 40. So I can even look at the software updates through here, but I just did mine. So they are up to date in there and our memory and device name, which is awesome. But another thing that I like, here's the network, Bluetooth, oh that's okay. We've got a pretty nice options of desktop backgrounds, which I love. This one's pretty, pretty beautiful. I'm just going to use the, uh, uh, where is it, the uh, default, which is this one. But notifications are great. You can have them on. Anything is great in Debian. But to install the printers, it's a lot. It comes right away without installing the cups, which I love. And we do have the accessibility, which was renamed after Universal Access. I can make the text very large. I can make it high contrast. I could make it zoom, so I could make it really big. Ooh. But that's just the Universal Access menu. Uh, I'm going to go into some of the apps now. We've got Firefox ESR which is the main br web browser of Debian. We have Evolution, which is the mail client default. Rhythmbox is for playing music. The LibreOffice Suite, LibreOffice Writer, which uh, is usually a version behind, if I'm not mistaken. This would be version 7.0, and if this doesn't come up, I can always search here as well for the LibreOffice. It's version 7.0.4.2. I'm a big old LibreOffice fan. I like the old formats a lot better, but it's whatever the ways it goes. It's anything to help uh, write your documents or whatever. It's fun. Uh, the files client is as well very nice. I do like it. It's just great. The software and the GNOME help and my simple screen recorder, which is not an actual favorite here in the bar. So let's say I want to add Chromium BSU into my favorites, I drag it over. And now it's there forever until I move, I move it away, or if I click remove from favorites. So now it's gone. And I could always undo that if I wanted to. The GNOME games are awesome. Uh, but now let's go back into the um, tweak tool. Renamed tweaks in Debian 10 Buster. We have a lot of options here. Uh, we have our general uh, section, appearance section, extensions, which are awesome, our GNOME, our fonts, our keyboard and mouse, our startup applications when we log in, our top bar area, which is great, so I could add the date there if I wanted to. That's really nice. And the window title bars, I highly recommend have these on. They are set to off in the default, but see, look, minimize and maximize are not here, but if I turn those on, they are here now. Our windows area and the workspaces area. So here's our workspaces. Let's say I have Firefox open, and I want Firefox to be in a separate workspace. See, so much easier to find our apps. But I'm just going to close this and show you around the LibreOffice suite. But my favorite to use is the LibreOffice Impress, which is basically a PowerPoint. It's the same thing, but it's much, much advanced. Rather than Debian 10, a lot, lot simpler in Debian 10 than in this Debian release, Debian 11. So that's really much all I have to say in this review video about Debian uh, 11. It's not as great as Debian 10 is, but whatever, it's um, it takes the mark, it hits the bullseye mark. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. And, like I said, the Simple Screen Recorder as well, I should explain that, is a great app to record as well as I am recording right now. It's great. I highly recommend it. And that's going to do it for this video.
Thanks so much for watching.